Lord, we, we want to say some prayers. We want to we want to send some special prayers out tonight, Lord. Yes. Amen. We want to ask you, Lord, to bless this whole nation, Lord. Yes. Lord, yes. Lord yes. Touch yes. every heart, Lord. Yes. Lord we ask that you bless the homeless, Lord. Yes. We ask that you bless yes. the people in the hospitals, the yes. sick. Yes. Oh, we ask that you bless the elderly, Lord. Touch their hearts, Lord. We ask that you bless all our family members and just everybody, Lord. We ask that you bless the top, the politicians, Lord. Yes, we ask Lord. that you work this DACA thing out, Lord, according to your will. Oh, oh, Lord, and we thank you, to, we thank you today, Lord, for us being here, Lord. We thank you for each and every one of us here that's here, Lord. And those that wanted to come, Lord, they couldn't make it, Lord. We ask that you touch their hearts, Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch my wife's heart right now. Yes, Lord. Lord. Lord, I, Lord I, I, we just thank you, Lord, for everything yes. that you've done. Thank you, Lord, we thank you for this lesson that we're about to get into tonight, Lord. We ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, that you just let our minds be like a sponge. Yes, and your word, like word, Lord, so that we can absorb your word, Lord, and we can understand your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. Thank God. Amen. 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 Have seats. I have to admit... I'm still stuck on what is your lifestyle. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still stuck. I'm still stuck on that. I'm, I'm still stuck on that. So it, it, it may be, it, it, it may be things. I think I'm doing all right, but I'm quite sure I can do better. Oh, we all do. I'm quite sure. I'm just, you know, it's like speaking for me. I said, I know I think I'm doing all right, but I know I can do better. Yeah. I know I, I can do better. I can do better, and I can be better. Yeah. And so can I just say something? Yes. And, and, and I, that's been working on me too. And I guess that that's why when I started reading the Sunday school lesson on circumcision and com and then getting with what is my lifestyle, I start like, okay, Lord, I know you're not talking about circumcising me physically, but circumcise my heart. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Get what's that's in it. me right. out, yes. whatever it is. Yes. You know? Because yes. yes. I do want to do better. Yes. You know, yes. so I want, exactly. and I know that I'm a work in progress, and my lifestyle yes. is not how it. It's not perfect. But who is perfect? Right. Nobody but Jesus. Right. But I know that I'm a work in progress, yeah. and as long as he keep on working on me and working in me, I'm yes. going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was kind of the, the same way. It's like, yeah. I, know, I know I can do better. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, if I'm just going to talk about me, I don't know. I can get an attitude if you push me that way, but I'd rather not. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd rather, I, I rather, I rather, I rather not. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, no, I won't. Yeah, I won't. Mm. I won't. Yeah, man. I have to. I have to, I have to uh, throw that out there. That still, I was. Um, that was really, that was really good. So it was, it was really good. So I really, I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate my pastor. And that's one thing. Of all the years that I know my pastor, he won't tell you the truth. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just as kind-hearted as he wanted to be, even before he met my, my sister. He was, I've always known him to be that way. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad he and my family fold. Hey. Amen. <laughs> he and my family too. Amen. <laughs> but we just, we're, still, we're still stuck on what is your lifestyle, Pastor. We, 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 we still, we're still stuck on what is your lifestyle. We're st I'm still yeah. stuck on that. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I know I think I'm all right, but I can do better. Amen. So without further ado, uh, our lesson with number one, this is our first week. Um, we are God created man as a special being. Uh, our background reading, we have Psalms 8, 1 through 9. And our devotional reading, we have Psalms 1, you know, Psalms 144. So this was good also. You know what, let me stop talking. We're gonna bring our teacher this evening, Sister Angela. Come on, girl, this is my old time here, y'all. Uh, we say amen as she comes. I know she got a word for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
study this. You want to go ahead and <laughs> see what the Lord done give you? <laughs> bless us, Lord. God. God bless each and every one of you. Thank the Holy Father for bringing us all here on tonight, safe and sound. It's so good to see my sisters. I, I like being around you guys. I really yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. I, do. I like being in your midst and uh, as, a, as one of you, a fellow sister. And so it's so good to see each and every one of you to our pastor and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We do, and our president, Sister Cheryl, and our first lady. And then to all the rest of my sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. Amen. And my sister way back there, she said that's her Tuesday night seat. But <laughs> uh, I hear you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We have a beautiful, beautiful lesson on tonight. Yes, it is. Ooh. Have you ever studied? God gave you something to study and you studied it and he opened it up to you in such a way that you just kind of started crying or yeah. fell on your knees. And, and just had to get out of the room, find a, 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 a private place and just kind of like, because he opened it up. He yes. turned on a light yes. that you thought was already on the half. Oh, and you yes. thought you knew it, yes. <laughs> understood that already. That's what I, whoo, I love this lesson. I just pray and I ask that you pray in Jesus' name that he would op allow me to, to open my mouth and let the Holy Spirit speak through me yes. so that yes. you can hear yes. what it was he shared with me on this lesson and he may even take it even further amen yes. because it is good for all of us it's good for me too i'm just a i'm not even a sp spokesman i'm i'm, I'm just a a, a tool <laughs> a yielded vessel that he can yes. use you know but uh uh, but I enjoy being that. Amen. <laughs> That's all right. Nothing wrong with that, is it? No. Amen. So I thank God um, for the prayer that we just had and, and for the introduction. And we're going to go right into our lesson. I'm going to encourage you to, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be, be able to bring it in. But after our lesson, I'm going to encourage you this evening or sometime this week to read the devotional reading if we don't get to it tonight. Amen. So our lesson tonight, and bless us, dear Jesus, bless me, use me, humble me. Thank you. I had to calm down. God created man as a special being, as a special being. So in this lesson, I had to pull out what's that special is all about. Amen. <laughs> we know he created man. We believe that. Amen. But we're going to get into this. All right, I have to go get my Bible. And um, we're going to get right into this lesson. We have background scriptures. We have central verse. Um, we're going to first read that central verse. And, and just follow me. And, 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 and if you can, guide me. Pull me back in if you have to. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. You was talking about this. I want to hear more. And I'm over here. Pull me back. You know, help me out. And get into it. Let God use you. Amen. Our central verse is, what is man? that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Amen? Amen. What is man that thou art mindful of him? In our question, we have, um, um, I'm going to go the, the way I studied. We have a question in, in our our lesson, question number two, um, let's see. Question number one, it says, what is significant of the use of the word visited? What is man that, are, that, are mind, that, he, that thou art mindful, that you think about him, that you have him on your mind? What is man that, that God has him, has us on his mind? Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the son of man that thou visit us. And so uh, the question came, what has visited us? It, that he cares for us. Yes, yes. 
the so why is he thinking about us? Why is he caring for us so? You know, and, and it, this is, if, if the, the, the Holy Spirit is going to let me do this. It's, it's going to come out so beautifully in my mind, and I hope it comes out of my mouth. Amen. <laughs> okay, so our, our background scripture, and so, and then it says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Lower than the angels, which means the angels who are made a little more superior or are higher than, than, than man. But God is yet mindful and careful and cares about man. But when it says the angels basically were made in, um, uh, a little higher than us since we were made a little lower, I thought about that and I said, well, what's the difference? I know they don't have the, the human body, but they're, uh, in, in some cases they're called a man. And, um, and uh, in Revelations, he said, one of the angels said, I'm your brother. Don't, you know, bow down to me. I'm your brother. What's the difference? Well, what came to my mind is they're in front of the face of God all the time. They're right there around the throne. Amen. <laughs> you can't get no better than that. <laughs> they're right there worshiping, praising, and serving God all day long to be in the presence of God without dying, <laughs> to see his face and not to crumble into ashes. You know, those are his angels, his ministering angels. They're a little higher because, and I love this thought, Jesus, Jesus said, those that are greater among you, let them be your servant. And the angels serve, they are servants. And so they're a little higher, but they are our servants. Uh, following the orders of God. Amen. So um, that's a blessing. That's, that's, that's no different than um, the, a parent. They're higher than us, but they're serving their children. Taking, that's what the serving is. It's taking care of, looking out for. Amen. Amen. So that was beautiful to me uh, concerning the angels and, and man. Our topic again, God created man as a special being. Special means something that's set apart, something that's, that's actually different from all the rest. Amen? God created man as a special being. Our background scripture uh, reading, we're going to go to Psalm 8. And I like the way the, the, the uh, writer laid out this lesson. It made it so easy for me. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go to top, <laughs> chapter 8. And I love last week, our, our first lady, she got up laughing and giggling. <laughs> and then she said, it's, so, it's good to laugh sometimes. It's, it's okay to laugh. And I said to myself, and I've said this many times before when I hear people say that, why do we have to say that? It ought to just be, you know, in our spirit. That's, that's a natural thing, laughter. God gave us laughter. But only the church people because we thought somehow we yeah. got, got it mixed up and thought we had to be so stern and so straight and, and not giggly. Not, but laughter is so good for us. And, so, and, it, and it, it's good for our bones, our marrows. It, it, it brings out orphans or dwarfins, whatever it is, that makes us even more, even more happy. Amen? So you only have to explain it to anybody that when you're laughing, you're laughing because God made you to be a, right. to be a, who is that? Uh, uh, Isaac? La who, which? Uh, <laughs> laughter? No, no, but the name, Isaac means laughter. He created <laughs> Amen. Was that Isaac? Anybody Sunday school? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God bless you. Chapter 8 of, of um, Psalms, verse 1. We're going to read straight through it. It's only nine verses, and we're going to read straight through it, and then we're going to study it verse by verse almost, pretty much so. Okay, so it, um, I'm going to read it in the King James uh, Version of the Bible, and as I said, that's how I like to... Uh, open up initially with the King James and then whatever, you, however you want to comment or bring in um, 
you know, your questions are word and you have a version that, wanna, you, that would speak it out in the way you know you would use it, then feel free. But let's start out with everybody on the same page. Amen. Um, the, ooh, I just talked so much. Does anybody want to read? <laughs> I want to read real loud, though. Come on. The Lord, our Lord, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and, babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou makest, madest him to have dominion over the works of thine hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowls of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the path of the sea. O oh Lord, everybody together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Amen. All the earth. Amen. 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 So that was the reading of God's word. And yes, I understood it. I understand the King James talk. <laughs> I understood what he said. <laughs> so I <laughs> thank you, Lord. All right. And what we're going to do, first of all, I've added to our background scripture one more verse. Uh, yeah. First John. Not first John. I'm sorry. St. John, and we want to read that and just add it into this, and, and, and it, it'll bring out itself. St. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Amen? You have it? Anybody, any readers? In the, excuse me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Yeah, amen. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And I make chapter, verse 3 a reference verse. Amen. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. Add that into your notes as a reference verse. So we're going to go on, and we're just going to go right into our introductory. It says, that's in our book, and I hope everybody uh, uh, have a book, and we're on page two. Yeah, everybody's equipped. Amen. Amen. This week's lesson considers man compared to the magnificence of universe of the universe. Here we are exposed to God's special care for people and what He has entrusted to entrusted them to do. Amen. That was our introduction, kind of giving us a little background of what the writer was thinking when he put this lesson together. Uh, here we are exposed to God's special care for people and what he has entrusted them to do. Amen? Amen. So um, we're going to go right on into our background scripture is broken up in about three or four parts. One, two, three, four parts. Amen. And so we're going to just follow along how that's broken up. Amen. The first part, uh, and this is called our discussion, still on page two, the children praise the creator. So that would be Psalms 1, verse 1 and 2. 
and we're going to read each time. So, 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 so keep your uh, Bible open to Psalms 8. And keep praying for me now. Keep praying for me. Whew, thank you, Lord. Verse 1 and 2. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, what ha who has set thine glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mayest steal the enemy and the avenger. Amen. Amen. A lot of the Old Testament have prophetic words. Um, they prophesy of, of the Messiah's coming. And uh, it's like what you hear, we've heard, and which is true, Jesus is in all the scriptures. He's in, in every book of the Old Testament. He's in there. And those are prophetic. Uh, and, and there's another word, because some, uh, there's another word that escaped me, but like, this, like the rock that Moses struck. And we understand that that rock was Jesus. You know, that, that, that's not pro prophetic. There's another word there. And if I ever, anybody know what that word would be? It's, it's a, uh, uh, anyway. So, but that's what I mean. He's in all the scriptures. And not only um, in an imagery way, but it, the, some of the scriptures tell exactly what's going to happen when the Messiah comes to earth. Amen. It tells about his birth. You know, his ministry and, 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 and the death and, and risen. And, you know, it's all already in thousands of years before it happened. Amen. Amen. This scripture that we just read, we're on verse uh, in verse two. If you would go with me, you remember what verse two said? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies. Right. Go to Matthews with me, if you will. Chapter 21. Are you there? Matthew chapter one, 21, verse 16. It Amen. says, and he, let me go. Um, okay, we're going to start at verse 15. And when the chief priest and when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the to the son of David, um, they were they were sore displeased. The chief priests and the scribe were sore displeased with what was going on. Verse 16 and said unto him unto Jesus, hear thou what they say, these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never heard out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? Amen. Amen. Jesus, and not only did the Old Testament scripture usher Jesus in, talk about him. Uh, the Messiah coming, when Jesus got here, he referred back and reminded the people what they had read in the Old Testament. Don't you remember what the scriptures said? Amen? Amen. Amen. So out of the mouth of babes and suckling. And I want you to go also with me to chapter, uh, stay in, in Matthew, chapter 19, I believe, in verse 14, 13 and 14. And I'm going to bring this part of it home. And it says, um, 19, 13, and 14. There were, there were there three. There were, then were there brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. 
shall come. Praise. Amen. Amen. In this lesson and in this part of this verse, so I'm not going to, so I won't tarry too long on it. I want you to think of two words. Inhibited and uninhibited. What made the children's praise so pleasing and pleasant and welcoming to God? What is it that made their praise a perfect praise in God, an acceptable praise in God? And I wrote down, the Lord gave me this. And I'm going to read it. Read it. Uh-huh. Here we go. That's okay. I'm going I'm to do it anyway. Because <laughs> it looks like one of my things are missing, but that's okay. Inhibited. Uninhibited. Inhibited. Not uninhabited. Not inhabited it with an A, but with an I, because I got confused there. So <laughs> uninhabited it with an A, that means empty, not, it's vacant, something that's vacant. But in our lesson, the children, their praise is beautiful because they don't have the problems that we do. Their praise is beautiful and acceptable to God because God looks at the heart. Yeah. And they were genuine in their yeah. praise. Yeah. They enjoyed it. And they were not, listen, Amen. they were not, they were uninhibited. They were not inhibited. They were, the children were free. Now, they were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. Think of the little tiny, Hosanna. of children and a bunch of children at that, you know, and then from young and big and it was just a loud, loud praise and worship that they got angry with them, you know, and they wanted Jesus to shut them up. But what did Jesus say? Anybody remember what Jesus said when they wanted him to, them to quiet the children? Verse going is, hmm? Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. The kingdom of heaven belongs. Why? Their hearts are already. Listen, we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. They have the sin nature, but they have not lived yet. They have not taken on the cares of this world. They have not even taken on the cares of mommy and daddy yet. All they know is they're being loved and they know how to show love. They're, they're being cared for and they know how to be thankful and praiseful. And even though. Um, they, they may be mimicking mom and dad in the church, even though, but guess what? Their hearts are still proof. They gotta, they're going to learn anyway. This is part of the learning, but it's the excitement of the learning to them. The, the scene of the hands go up and the dancing of the feet. They got more excited and just hollered even louder. The children love to worship God, when they, especially when they know that's why they come to church. Because they get to worship God. They are so free, uninhibited. Yes. Amen? Amen? They love it, and God loves it. And he yeah. looks at the heart. Like I said, we all have, to have that sin nature from birth. But God saw a pure, natural, uninhibited, trusting, faithful praise, praise. coming yeah. out of their heart. Yeah. Amen? Coming out of the hearts of the children. And so we want to remember that our children, I wrote that down, our, our, our children, they're not atheists. They're not born atheists. They don't start out that way. Even if with, the, with our old nature, we don't start out as, that's taught. That's, that's um, you know, that's passed on to them, you know. But in the natural sense, they know how to see and hear and understand that we have a God and we can say thank you and they can marvel even if they're just marveling at, oh, look what I can do with my hands. Oh, look what I can do. Even if they just begin to have, you had a child look up in the sky, 
What is that? I was I had two little children in my car one day, um, taking them home or bringing them with me, and we were driving. The moon was behind us, and one of the kids looked and he said, "It's following us. The moon is following us." You know, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness, uh, it is, huh?" Oh, everything excites them. God loves that kind of excitement, and He wants us to be just that excited, yeah, yeah. excited about Him. Yeah. But we got to move so much out of the way to get back to that level. Yes. So much out of the way. It's called, and I, and I just, and, and like I said, I'm just going to finish this off. The difference is um, inhabited. The children are uninhabited, inhabited, able to act, unable to act in a relaxing and natural way because of self-consciousness, mental restraints, and other words, shyness, reserved self-consciousness, differences, uh, reluctance, hesitance, insecurities, uh, unconfident, uh, uptightness, huh? meanness, amen, jealousy, all of these things get in our way. Unbelief. Yeah. Unbelief. Get in the way of our praise. Yes. We, and, and that's why it seemed like when we get up and get started, our, our feet feel so heavy. It's like I want to praise him, but search in your heart. Search in what's holding, your, what's holding you grounded. Amen. What's holding you grounded? Something's going on. Something that you, you, you may not have allowed to come to the forefront, but there's the cares of this world. Yes. And God wants us to be free, free of all of this. And we can be. Yes. We can be free. We have to um, want it, first of all. We have to want it. I used to, um, I, praise and worship, is, I guess you could say, is my thing, because I don't mind. I love it. And I seriously, honestly ask God to give me a church where I can just float all over. Now, listen, I was asking him for my own building because I said, I don't want anybody in it because I can't really let go and be myself. But I want to sing as loud as I can sing. I want to dance around because I, 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 I need my freedom. In the spirit, amen. I need to be, a, if nothing else, let go so you can shake it off. Get into it, holler, leap for joy, amen. Shake it off, get into it, and let the Lord bless you, and then just open your mouth and sing, you know, sing as loud as you can. Sing, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Um, whew. There was two songs that came to my mind, then we're going to move on to the other uh, scriptures. One song I'm going to sing, and I think another song is just going to pop into your mind, and I'm asking whoever gets this other song. After I finish my few words, then you sing your song. Somebody else may have a totally different, but you'll see how it fits in. Here it is. My song is, whew, bless the Lord, Loose My Shackles. Set me free, open my eyes, that I might see, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, give me a song, give me a song. Mm -hmm. I was singing, I was singing before I got here. I don't know why I popped it to my head. With my hands lifted up. All right. All right. And my mouth filled with praise. All right, all right, all right. With the heart of thanksgiving, <coughs> I will bless thee, O oh Lord. So I started singing that when I was doing the lesson. Hey, and man. I, got, hey, I just man. went and got on the bus and I came down here and it was like, what? So just to oh, head. he but wants you to let it go. Be free. Yes, yes. Amen. Wow, with the hands of yeah. thanksgiving. I have, I have issues. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. 
Sometimes See? if I can't do it, I give Mama rockers and I date. Oh, but. Yeah, but God wants us to get rid of the issues, get rid of the barriers, the things that's keeping us grounded, you know? Get rid of them, and we can. Just get excited for the Lord, more excited for the Lord. The other song was, and, and then these, these songs that I came up with, I was hoping that Sister Mary would get this one. But, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it's within the... Um, being inhabited and inhabited, and, and, and it says, I was shackled by a heavy burden. Go ahead. Beneath the load of sin and shame. Yes, Lord. But then the hand of Jesus yes. touched me. Yeah. And now I am no longer the same. Everybody, come on. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know Jesus touched me. And he made God, glory to God. So let him touch you today. Come on. You know what? Let him touch you. Let him touch you. So on every Sunday, on every side of the church, everybody is full of praise. You know, not half the church, but the whole church. Amen. Let's, let's, let's tell them. Let's touch them and say, Jesus touched you. Be inhibited and uninhibited. Uh, let him praise his name. You know, worship him. Worship the Lord. Amen. 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 So as we greet each other, and I've done this with several already. Let's worship the Lord. It's going to be good today, huh? Let's do Let's work. As we greet, just, just, you know, put the excitement in them even before we get started. Let's say, let's worship the Lord. It's going to be good today, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Get them excited if you have to. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we can have the kind of praise that the children have. A praise that's pure in heart. Amen. Our next, our next part is um, uh, verses three and four. I hope I didn't spend too much time on that lose out, but I hope we can go on. Let's see. I keep closing my my Bible. <laughs> Sorry about that. Verses three and four. Um, in our topic, it says the, the creator loves his people. Psalm 8, verse 3 and 4. And when I consider thy heavens, the works of thine fingers, the moon, the stars, which, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visiteth him? And so we talked, we, um, that, that was our central verse. And he asked the question, what is man? What is man? Our topic is God created man as a special being. Well, he started out talking about in verse 3, the sun, the stars, and the moon, the galaxies. And look how much God has done, how beautiful the works of his hand. Mm -hmm. you know, we can see that with our eyes. Amen. We can see it, and, and the Bible tells us the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Amen? The heavens. And um, the beauty, all the galaxies and the um, everything up there. I, I, I even said the galaxy, our galaxy alone. We pretty much can't see past that, and most of it you would need a telescope to see it all. That's how vast it is, right? How many remember all the, the galaxies that's in our galaxies, all the planets? Huh? How many planets do we have that we actually learned about? The planets. S come on, anybody, oh, sh say one out. You say Jupiter. one, somebody, huh? Yeah. Jupiter. Jupiter. Uranus, Pluto, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. You got them. You got them. Nine of them. You got them. So beautiful. So beautiful. How many of them have a ring around them? 
one. 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 Which one? Saturn. Huh? Saturn. Saturn. We, Saturn. We know that Saturn has See a ring Saturn. around. This is the works of God's hands, people. The sun the, yes. to shine on the earth by day and the moon to give light by night and the moon and the stars. The stars are, are not even considered, uh, we understand, he, he's calling them stars, and he said that, that to give light on the earth. So the stars are those blinking things that we see in the sky. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know that they're all planets, but I don't think they're all planets. They're what God said. They're stars to give light. Amen. And, and on, a, on a beautiful, clear day out in the country <laughs> somewhere, you look up. In the fields of Mississippi, that's the biggest sky you ever want to see. You can look like you can see every star in the sky, but yet you know there's so much more beyond that. You know, the works of God's hands. He says, um, when I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, the hand of God did all that. Amen. And then he asks the question, what is man? That thou art mine. What is man in, in, in respect to all of this? What is man? Okay, so let's read this part. It says, um, uh, the creator loves his people. The night sings, calls forth praise of God's glory. When man, I'm going to skip parenthesis, is compared with all of the vastness above him, However significant man seems, he is truly just a just the son of mankind and of many. I'm going to read that again. When man is compared with all the vastness above him, how insignificant man seems, he is truly just the son of mankind and one one of them and many of them there are many of us amen that's what he's talking about we come we started out from adam and we just continue to produce mankind from that point on amen but we're all just mankind we're all the same in other words he looked up at the heavens and, and he named all these planets and saw the stars and the moon they're all different they all have their own glory they all have their own special beauty he was looking at him, <clears throat> and he said, well, what is man? We're all the same. You know, we're, you know what? We don't realize we're all the same, but we're all the same. Amen? <laughs> we are all the same. <clears throat> Bless me, Lord. And so in parenthesis, it says, um, the night sings, calls forth God's praise and glory. <clears throat> in this context, the, he the Hebrew definition of man means Moral, transcendent, um, <clears throat> perishable, and frail. That's the definition, uh, the Hebrew definition of the word man. Moral, transcendent, uh, perishable, and frail. Amen? And so it is. And uh, even the Bible talks about uh, just being like the grass that withers, the flowers that withers. You know, we just hear Today, gone tomorrow, so to speak, you know, we, we just moving. Up. But listen, <clears throat> but what God has given me on this. Um, so we name the planets and then we go on to say God is aware of each person on Earth from the littlest to the biggest. And he cares for everyone. He wants a personal relationship with everyone. So and I put this in parenthesis so that he can demonstrate his love to those he created. So that he can, listen to this. He wants a personal relationship with everyone so that he can demonstrate his love to those he created. And this is where the difference of man and beast come in, amen? God made man in his own image, in his likeness. God, I, I put here, reminding me to affirm this fact. God, <clears throat> so he, God, can show his love. So he, 
man is the only one who can communicate with God back and forth. Um, <clears throat> I put in my affirmation um, to tell you that, in other words, uh, affirm, to affirm, to tell of, to declare, to state, to assert, assert to proclaim, to announce, to attest to, give witness to. Man is the only one that can do that. God has shown his love in all of creation, how, what a good God he is in all of creation. Now he created, he, at, the, at the last, he created man last. And this one is going to worship me. This one is going to open his mouth and tell others about me. In other words, we may be all alike. One, one being, not like the stars, everything different, but we're all alike, therefore we should have no excuse. We can all communicate the love of God to each other, and that's what he wants us to do. He wants us to communicate the love of God to each other, and he wants us to communicate the love of our heart for him. We're going to go this way, and we're going to go that way with the love of God, amen? He wants to show and demonstrate his love to somebody who can communicate in his language. He made us in his language where he can talk to us and we can talk to him. And through the Bible, he talks to us. And through our prayers, we talk to him. Amen. And then we share him. The, the, after we look at the vastness, how can we not share him? We're, we're not atheists that we can look at all this and say, I know man didn't know something, but there ain't no such thing as God. So they're not going to share God. They're not even going to want to talk about it. But my goodness, we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts, and he has opened up our minds, our hearts, and our understanding, yes. and we know God. Amen? Yes. And so God wants to... Uh, Man was made special, a little lower than the angels, for a purpose. And it's a special purpose because out of all of his creation, we're the only ones with a big mouth. Amen? Let's use it <laughs> for the glory and honor of God. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 So uh, special beings we are. Amen? <laughs> God is good. Oh, my goodness. And so, um, so um, he wants a one-on-one. -on -one relationship. We, we, do you know, somebody tell me, where's the word relationship found in the Bible? We say it all the time. God wants a relationship with you. We go to people in our witness. God wants a relationship with you. What are we saying? What are we truly saying? Come on, talk up loud. Then. I said community. Commune, he wants to commune. He wants to commune. All right. Anybody else? Can, come on. Give me a picture. A picture of that. Come on. He wants a, per, a relationship. I thought about the word relationships. And, and uh, if you think about it, that's really a human term. Mm -hmm. That's really a human term. Because God wants us to give our whole self to him so that he can work out the plan and purpose of our lives. A relationship, human terms, it's you and me, and we work ourselves out together. You accept me, I accept you as you are and who you are, and then we can love each other and we can have a relationship. But if we don't accept who you are, I don't, uh, you can't change me and I can't change you. So, But it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that human relationship. We just don't have the right words to, you know, bring it out. But we need to. We need to because he gave us, he put himself in us first and, and now he wants to bring it out of us and he wants to order our steps. And we ask him, order our steps, Lord. And he is the one that has the, I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. And he wants us to walk in his way. But we want him to say, okay, Lord, but you got to do this. For me, too. Mm -hmm. I got some desires and some plans. Well, friend, <laughs> we got to let ours go. Yeah. If you want mm -hmm. that, as we say, personal relationship, that one-on-one -on -one relationship where God is Lord and Savior and King of our life. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to realize that 
when Christ died, we, we died with him. When he rose, he rose again. And Paul said that, that he, uh, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. Our lives are hid in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That he is the only one that knows which way I should be going and what I should be doing. And he is going to direct my path. Our lives are hid and we've given ourselves over to him that he may lead and guide us. And that's more to me than a personal relationship. We just haven't developed the word. We haven't uh, developed that out as much as we possibly could. And I think uh, after tonight, if you really think about it, let's come up with uh, another way, and uh, even, you know, another way. We can't get too deep. That's another thing, situation too. People understand the word relationship, but you have to let them know, but it's one-sided. <laughs> Amen. If we come, go ahead, on, sister. But if he abides in me and I in him, Ooh. we'll have a sweet relationship. Ooh, we'll have a sweet. Did, did you hear that? She said, can you say that again real loud? <laughs> We'll have a sweet relation, and it'll be a oneness. It is not one-sided. It is oneness. Amen? It's a oneness, and that's what God wants from us. And that's why he called, we're considered his special beings. He saved the best for last. He made us at the, you know, on the sixth day after he created everything for us. Amen? So moving right along. Okay, did, did, did we bring that out good? Any, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts on that? Um, the next part is um, each person is a royal caretaker. <clears throat> I, I enjoyed this one. Each person is a royal caretaker. Verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> For thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou makest him made him uh, to have dominion over the works of thine hands. Talking about man, God made man to have dominion over the works of his hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Amen? Amen. Those are those chapters. Let's read what our um, verses, um, <clears throat> what our uh, thought is on that before we talk on it. It says each person is a royal caretaker. Um, Brother Michael, can you read that for us, please? Thank you. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The, excuse me, three things designate man's position on earth. His relationship to divinity, humble for God, his dignity, the glory and honor of a personal relationship with God, and his dominion as the king of kings, caretaker of all created things on earth. As Christians, we should, re we should recognize that we are world caretakers of the earth. We should take care of the earth by working to eliminate pollution sources that damage and kill living things. This does not mean that Christians should change themselves to trees to prevent logging or involve themselves in other activist protests, but such things as picking up trash or road signs, recycling what we can, and practicing all the good com um, conservation habits are commendable and consistent with biblical teaching. Such habits should be taught to children and demonstrated by Christian adults. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. I, I like this part in the first um, paragraph, um, the last sentence. It says, um, <clears throat> talking about God. And his dominion, talking about man. <clears throat> Let me read that whole paragraph. These three things designated things designate man's <clears throat> position on earth. His relation, his relationship is the is uh, what is it? Divinity. Divinity is divinity. Okay, humble before God. Divinity, talking about God, is uh, he has a spiritual relationship. Um, his dignity, the glory and honor of a person, a personal relationship with God. So we have his divine relationship before God and his dignity, a personal relationship with God. And his uh, dominion as king of kings, caretakers of all creation. 
Go with me, please, real quick. Well, what's my time? How much, what time do we have? <laughs> okay, Genesis, the first chapter. And um, just that 27th through the 31st verse. Okay, verse 27. <clears throat> So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in, in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To, uh, to you it shall be for, for meat. For, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast on the, of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Amen. When you listen to that, when you read that passage, when I read it, and I, uh, Holy Spirit helped me out here. When I read that passage, God put, created man, and he made everything uh, perfect for man to live on earth. And he made it everything um, possible that man could be able to eat, Drink and be married and have children, amen? And to live a joyous and happy life on the earth. All the provisions, is what I'm trying to say, are made. They're set for him. All the provisions. So my question is, so what need was there for God to be concerned about us? He made us and he made all the provisions and everything is set for man to be able to function on the earth. Did you understand my question? What need? Everything is perfect there. What need was there for God to be con concerned about us? Why didn't after that point, he said, okay, it's all set. They're perfect there. You know, it's, it's all worked out and they're going to be fine. Let's go start another something here or there or do this or that and, and just go on his way. A lot of people think God has done that. And we know he hasn't. They, they like, where is God? You know, but he's here. Anybody want to just, uh, of, of your own thoughts, give an answer to that? I'm thinking that God knew that there was going to be a fall. He knew that there was going to be a fall. Definitely, okay. I'm going to come back to that answer too. Brother Michael? We were created to worship and praise God, and if we were made perfect, there's only one perfect, and that is God. Mm -hmm. So therefore, although we're made in his image, you know, we're not perfect because only he is perfect. We cannot, we're working towards perfection as we strive to go to heaven. And not until then can we achieve that, and we can only do that with God's help. All right, beautiful answers. Brother, um... Did you have me? Who? I saw another hand. All right. I saw, oh, go ahead. One of the things to it, it connects um, the fellowship because if you look at the next thing he did, he created, um, he made woman and then Adam and Eve had fellowship. Mm -hmm. So we, we can see all of the connections and that's God's idea for us to have fellowship and communion and whatnot. Amen. And he shows us that in that next step. Amen. Amen. God created us for himself, amen, <laughs> as special people, so that, that we should get to know the love. God is what? God is love, 
And like we said earlier, he, we are his chosen special people because we're in his image and we can communicate with him. And remember in the Garden of Eden, he came down in the cool of the night to commune. You know, he made us for himself. We're, we're, we're his. He made some. And so, Sister um, Russian, what was your answer again? He knew that it was going to be a fall. He knew that it was going to be a fall. This, I like this part right here. Um, and his dominion, talking about man, as king of kings, king of kings, um, caretaker of all creation of the earth. What came to me is, um, okay, we're going to go into that other part. But listen to this. That's what God did, right? Until, and we know what happened, and we kind of fall, fall out. Now we're running from lions, tigers, and bears, like we, you know, and whales and things, instead of having dominion over them, right? Amen? <laughs> so do you not know God said we shall be kings on the earth, the new earth? He, we shall be priests and kings. And I used to wonder, try to picture that. All, every one of us, everybody, well, who are we going to be priest and king over if everybody is going to be a priest and a king, you know? Uh, I'm a thinker. <laughs> I ask a lot of questions. I don't... And when I read that part, I said, that's it. He's taking us right back to where he created us to have dominion over the earth, over the birds and the, uh, the air, seas, and the living... That's our, and, that, and that's what we're supposed to be today. We're supposed to be that today, but we know why we're not because of the fall. But he's taking us right back there. And that was the answer to, to my question, at least, if anybody else has. We are going to be kings and priests, and we are going to be the ones that have dominion over the earth once again the way God originally intended man to take over and to care for his earth. Amen? Did I, did, did I get that right or did I miss it? Uh, what am I missing there? God bless you. I thought that was deep. I said, ah. remember I started out saying, have you ever just studied the Bible and it just took you to your knees and you, got, you just got to pray? I mean, all this was happening and God just was, was I was just enjoying it. I was just, <laughs> sister first lady, you know what I mean? I was enjoying it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, the, okay, let's keep on going. As Christians, we uh, should recognize that we are royal caretakers of the earth. We should take care of the earth by working to eliminate pollution sources that uh, damage and kill living things. This does not mean that Christ should chain no, this does not mean that Christians should chain themselves to, to a tree to prevent log, logging and involve themselves in other, um, what's that word, activist pro protests. But such things as picking up trash from the roadside. I put parentheses on that, so I'm coming back. Recycle what you can and practicing other good conversations, habits, and uh, commend, uh, commendable. They, they are commendable. You know, exercising these good habits are commendable and consistent with biblical teaching. Such habits should be taught to children and demonstrated by Christian adults. Amen? Let's not leave our children out. If we already know they come into this world with a, with a heart that God, let's keep developing it. Let's keep it. Let's and help them to keep it as long as possible. We know life is going to happen, but if we put enough of God in them and show and, and make it clear and understanding that we are, we are his children, we are his creation. He loves us and look at the works of his hands. He's such a good God. And we just keep developing that in our children. Even when life happens, they have, they, 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 they know who they are. They know who they are in Christ Jesus. Um, in other words, they have a comfort zone in them that a lot of children would not have. Amen? Amen. Because I know I had a hard time in, in my childhood time going to school, but I couldn't wait to come home, and I couldn't wait to get to church. Those were my, if there's ever a vice, a vice, that was it, home and church for me, because I, I was just free. 
in home. I, I was loved at home. I was loved and cared for at church. And for a child to feel that and know that those places are available and that, oh, and when I get out of school, that's what I'm going back to. They're not going to let that stuff cause them to commit suicide and go off the bridge and do stuff like that because they have something. Amen? So let's not leave our children out. They're, 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 they, they are not um, too young to understand if you start them out. I mean, if mommy, when she's carrying the baby, starts talking to that child before he's even born, why stop after it's born? Keep on right? and bring it on all the way. Amen? Amen. So um, that's good. And then... Uh, any other comment? Any other comment? So I was commenting on the children. I said I was going to go back to this. But such things as picking up trash from the roadside. Amen? Amen. How many have stopped to do that lately? Hey, Amen. We had one hand go up. I heard that. <laughs> but as we're walking along the grocery store and different things, and, and uh, a lot of times we don't want to even put our hands on something. Sometimes you can pull a little napkin or clinics out your but, or, or kick it on at least up to the curb and get it out the way. Be conscientious. And what I thought about is, um, well, wait a minute. Isn't that what our tax dollars is paying for? So they can, do you know one person can't do it all? And if we can just allot it, that it will be done. That's what our taxpayers are. And this is not a cop out. We're still going to, as we go along in our everyday life, we're not going to let our earth and our, and our vision, the, the, the life, the path that we're on to be filthy and dirty. We want our world to be clean, right? But so since they put that in there, that's not saying that we all need to be out there on the side of the road like, like those prisoners who they release to do their city, city work, you know. That, that doesn't mean that, but we have to be conscious and understand, you know, thank God that part is taken care of. That section is taken care of. We pay taxes for that. And our city should be clean. And when it's not clean and we're getting out of hand, we should complain. We have that right. Because we're paying into that. But in our everyday, just like around in your, your, your outdoors and everything, and sweeping and cleaning, keep your areas, your area clean. Amen? Amen. So I just, um, uh, have I been digesting? <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the Russian said. I digest now or whatever. <laughs> I go back. Let's go back. Uh, humans care for animals. Um, um, humans care for animals. When a Christian has a pet, he is a royal caretaker of his animal. All the animals God created are to be cared for and used wisely by people. Pets need to be groomed, exercised, fed, and clean. Don't that sound like children? What you have to do for children? <laughs> Amen. But we are the ones that have dominion. We're supposed to take care of the world and the animals and stuff and not to misuse them. Amen? Uh, Amen. Uh, uh, young caretakers of pets can learn responsibilities to care for pets. See, they brought the children in there again. Let's not leave our children out because uh, they're going to be the next generation. And if we don't teach them, it's not going to be in them. And what kind of world is you know, we already see how the world is going down because of lack of training of a child in the way that it should go. Amen? So include them in the responsibilities of caring for God's earth and the things that he put us ruler over. Amen? The authority. Any other comment? Any comments or anything? Woo! Amen? Oh, serving in the church, whereas, you know, not a lot of people want to clean the bathrooms, per se. Mm -hmm. um, but then if you show that, you know, I, you know, I mean, you know, Jesus watched, he washed their feet. Yes. And, you know, he said, I am, I, I, I'm here to do service. So, you know, it's, it's a good replica of what we should actually instill with, within anyone, and also young people as well, uh, of service in the church is not some high rolling position. Mm. It could be also being on the janitorial staff, or either just, you know, or just at the door saying hello, greeting or something. It doesn't have to be high. It's the little stuff as well that counts. Because it all counts towards to God's kingdom. 
Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. And we do have to bring it home. We have to bring it to our to our individual homes and bring it into our church and to our communities and, and you know, continue on from there. And the church, and this is the training. This is, we say this is a training station. Amen. So yes, let's include our children. Our pets are beautiful. I love my cats and dogs. My husband's allergic to them. So I've been without one for a very long time. <laughs> But we do have three cats growing up in our backyard, and they've been there for quite a few years, since 2005, one of them, and we feed them. <laughs> we gave them names and everything, and uh, so we take care of what we can. <laughs> but I do tell my husband to bring the food in at night because I don't want to feed the skunks. I'm sorry. I don't want to feed the, those possums huh? because I don't want them to be encouraged to come. The Lord's got somebody to take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he com compartmentalized. These cares are going to be taken care. Isn't it beautiful? Did anyone see in the, on the news how the shelters from um, from Texas, Houston, they got all those animals out of the shelter? Now, isn't that that's why I said God has somebody because somebody had to think about that. What about the animals? And and surely it had to been somebody that has been around them that worked with them, but still. If we're in our place, we know our jobs, this world, we, things will be taken care of. Amen? Amen. So um, are we finished here? Um, are, are, so any other comments, questions? I just had a thought about um, uh, the part of uh, preventing a lot of tying ourselves to a tree. Okay. You know, but, it, but my thought is not tying to the tree, but it's... Um, like the AIDS walk and the cancer walks. Mm -hmm. I've always desired to do that. And Odette, my daughter, she wanted to uh, also do that with me, uh -huh. but we, ha we haven't done it because it's a two day event that's usually a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, and they and are. So, I mean, you know, you guys see me on the news on Sunday, you know, <laughs> pink and white, you know, oh, there, that's where she was today. You know? so, I've always desired to do that, but I. But you know what? That's beautiful. I, I have too. I've always wanted to walk those walks. Um, but you know, that's servantry. We know what we're doing it for. We got loved ones that are affected by these things. These are sicknesses and diseases that's in this world that we, if we got to pray for it, sometimes we can be the answer to the prayer. We can help as well. Amen. So there's nothing wrong with this. So catch one of those Sundays where the pastor say, how come you're not out there working? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I'll be standing behind me and say, me too, Pastor, I want to walk. Okay, so essential thought. I wanted to sing this song. I wanted to because it's part of, any more? Any more? This song is, come on and let's spread the news about my God's love. Come on and let's spread the news about my God's love. Can't stop to tarry, oh, until the work is done, oh. Well, come on, oh, come on, oh, come on, come on. Come on and let's spread the news about my God's love. Amen. Amen. Did you get the senses that this is what this lesson is about? Yes. The love of God. This, this essential verse, our God is magnificent in all creation. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for this opportunity yeah. <laughs> to release what the Holy Spirit has given to me. God bless you. In Jesus' name, I'll give you the hands of our president, Sister Sharon. Yeah. Oh, bless us, Lord. <laughs> Bless us, Jesus. I really, I really love these lessons. I especially like when they talked about the, the animals. I don't know if y'all know, but I have nine hamsters. Yeah, one of them, yeah, I have nine hamsters. And my, my grandson, CJ, he volunteers at the shelter for the animals, and he walks people dogs because he's not old enough to work yet. So he volunteers and he does that. That's what he likes to do. He loves animals. He wants to be not a veterinarian, but mm. a, a specialist. Mm. Yeah. And so I just tell him, you keep doing that, mm. all of that, get, yeah. get on the resume when you're able to work, you'll get there. Amen.
But this, 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 this lesson, it, it brought out brought out songs with Andy, it brought out a song with me, but you know what, I have to stop this. Because I, like I said earlier, I'm still stuck on one of the lifestyle, and then I bring that in with this. This should be our, our lifestyle, because we are created as special beings. Amen. And so people should see that in us. Yeah. But I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I would put it back on the table. Yes. Elder Ruth, Assistant Pastor Gresham, we're going to put it into your hands. Could you have the yes. last one? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give our teacher a hand. One of the things that I enjoy is, is your childlike faith. And uh, that's what the lesson paralleled when we went to uh, Matthew. I'm, I'm going to read one thing, and it kind of categorizes this. It said, the disciples must have forgotten what Jesus said had said about children. Jesus wanted little children to come because he loves them and because they have the kind of attitude needed to approach God. Mm -hmm. And it said he didn't mean that heaven is only for children, but that the people needed childlike attitudes of trust in God. And I think sometimes that we uh, get away from because we are grown um, that childlikeness. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that childlikeness. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because it keeps us in the right place. That's right. Yeah. But when we think we might be here, or we, we've uh, achieved so much, it puts us in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to stay humble. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what's going on, no matter how much money or job or whatever, just stay humble. Mm -hmm. One of the things I remember Pastor told me when I first got here a long time ago, he told me, he said, just stay humble. And that thing hit me. Um, and it, it, it stays on my mind. Um, and that's why I... I made my plate say that. It says stay humble. Stay humble. Yeah. That was because of him. And it keeps me uh, in the right frame. Yeah. It keeps me on the right path. No matter what God is doing, and he's doing some great things yeah. not just in my yeah. life, but in all of our lives. Yeah. But it keeps us with the right frame of mind. So that child likeness works. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you notice Jesus, he says, suffer the little children to come unto me, and yeah. forbid them not. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And uh, we, we get people now, we get so far away from the basics, we, we get, uh, man, we get off track. Mm -hmm. But yeah. amen, good good lesson, yeah. and it mm -hmm. reminds us of where we're supposed to be. It gave us some good parallel scriptures that talks about the creator loves his people, and God loves us, no matter what is going on. Uh, children praising the creator, each person is a royal caretaker, mm -hmm. and uh, our teacher brought all of those out and the human care for animals. So she didn't leave any stone unturned in this lesson. God bless you, bless you. Sister Andrew. We certainly do appreciate uh, that on tonight. Essential Thoughts said, our God is magnificent in all creation. Somebody said, God is clearly seen by the things that are visible. So people say, oh, there is no God. You can see God. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Stop yeah. breathing and see if there's a God. Oh, yeah. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Can't see the air. Uh -huh. yeah. Stop. Stop breathing. Don't be able uh, be not able to take that next breath yeah. and yeah. tell me where God is. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Right. Yeah, yeah. You ever drown or almost drown? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can tell you where God is. Because mm -hmm. I almost drowned mm -hmm. and didn't even know it. I don't know how I got out of the water, Sister Marianne, but all I know is I could just see the top of the water and I was under the water. Mm -hmm. But somehow I came out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was one miracle. I don't know. God had an angel there. I got angels watching over me. How about you? You got Amen. angels watching over me. Amen. 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 My God. Things have happened. And he keeps on doing great things. So God be the glory. Pastor, anything else? God bless you all. We appreciate you. Amen. Our, uh, our president, God bless you. We're standing. Sandra, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on with that. A childlike faith, yes. that enthusiasm. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's the same enthusiasm that we exercise even when we come on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 We come to praise Him. Yes. We don't want the enemy to get the glory because He's always doing something to try to discredit us. He doesn't want us to praise Him. He doesn't want us to magnify Him. He does not want us to lift Him up. He wants you to think about your problems and your ills and bills and things and stuff. Yes. And people hating on you and talking about you the water cooler. The devil is a liar. <laughs> Let them talk. 
Yeah. Let them talk. They they were talking. You said they hated me. You they hated me before they hated you. So don't worry about them. Uplifted hands. Pastor, you're going to lead us out of here. Come on, Shepherd. Father God in heaven, we thank you once again. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this lesson tonight for our teacher. Yes. Continue to bless her. Continue to open up her understanding. Yes. That she can teach the word and that we will understand what's coming out, oh God. Continue to bless each and every one of us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, touch everyone under the sound of our voice. Be with us even as we leave this place. Already be in the cars. Already be on the bus. Already be in the home. Protect us. Oh God, on our way. Lord, and we'll forever praise your name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. And we'll keep on praising your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen. Make peace and love. Make peace and love. Multiplied in our hearts. And add to the church day. And add to the church day. And I believe it. I believe it. Don't forget.